I know this Sunday no video was planned. But because the mailbag video that started last week was too long, I divided it into two. So today you get a bonus. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. We all know these DuPont wires and probably everybody of us uses them for experimenting. I also have a selection of such DuPont wires in different variations, male to male, male to female, female to female, and different colors and different length. But they are quite stiff because they have PVC plastic around them. Now, in my lab, I switched nearly all other wires already to silicon, so I was happy when I found a supplier who also produces DuPont wires in silicon quality. You see the biggest difference <laughs> is the color of the plugs here is silver and the plugs of the silicon ones is gold. So you can imagine what it means. They are of course much more expensive than the old ones, but they have a really nice touch. And because I work every day with these wires, I said I spent the money for the better quality. You get them also in different colors, different sizes and different shapes, also male to male and male to female and so on. Here is the listing and the colors you get. I purchased a little bit more of the black and red ones because I need more of them. Red is for me VCC and black is ground. Now we can check the pricing. We can buy them in nine pieces. So this is nine colors, one piece or five pieces per color, 45 pieces. I purchased this ones here. That is okay, five pieces for each color is okay for me. And here you have the different male to male and so on. And here you have different length. I have 10 centimeters and 20 centimeters. I do not need 30 or 50 centimeters. So you see the price varies around $9 plus a lot of shipping, $4.40 for each. So I asked the supplier to reduce shipping and he, re and he halved the shipping price. This was still expensive and I think he should go lower. So if you order, you ask him and say, uh, just the price, how much you want to pay. So these PVC wires are no more in use. I upgraded to the gold standard. I like Zigbee devices and I use them in my lab. For example, this switch to switch my camera or a similar switch to switch on my Prusa printer, stuff like that. They do not consume a lot of energy and work quite reliably. I use Zigbee to MQTT and I used this CC2531 dongle as a so-called coordinator or as we would call probably as a gateway connected to the Raspberry Pi. Here is the listing. It is now roughly $10, $5 plus $5 shipping, including an antenna. I highly r recommend to use an antenna with uh, this device here. In recent months, I saw that a new chip is available, the CC2652 R or P, and they are more reliable and obviously have also other uh, advantages. This is why I wanted to try it out. And I saw that Sonoff has a new device, which is comparable with this one. By the way, this is 3D printed, this uh, case here, you cannot buy it. But the Sonoff came in this package here. And it has a decent housing, fully aluminum, very, very nice, high quality case. The only disadvantage is they use this 
RP SMA connector, which is the wrong way around. I do not like these RP connectors, but uh, they, they used one. Uh, usually I immediately change it, but here I got an antenna with it, which has a fitting connector here, so it, there was no need to change it. But of course, always on this channel, if we get an antenna in our hands, we check if they are okay. What is the frequency of SIGB? 2.4 gigahertz, same as Wi-Fi. Here is my antenna analyzer from 2 to 2.6 gigahertz. And because this has a normal SMA connector, I have to use a RP adapter and all my RP stuff has this red point that I immediately see that this is reverse polarity. Now this is a little bit wrong here, but it's good enough for what we want to, to try. I put now the analyzer in a, in a place where it is not influenced by my hands and you see this yellow rectangle is at in the middle of the Wi-Fi band 2.45 gigahertz and you see we are way below the 2 to 1 SWR which is acceptable. The whole the whole band here is accept, is absolutely acceptable and the best SWR is 1.2 which is very good. So the antenna is really a Wi-Fi antenna in the right frequency range and the match is good. And here is the listing. It is $15 plus $1.60 shipping. So a very nice product, I think. If you start, I would heavily suggest to go into this direction because it's only about five or six dollars more expensive and it's more modern and the case is really nice. By the way, I connected it to my Raspberry Pi and it works without problems. The only thing I did is I flashed the newest firmware on it and had to map another USB device. But this is described on the sigp 2 mqtt homepage. The next one is just a simple transistor, it seems. It is an IRF7317. And if we open my transistor box, transistor and diode box here, there are also some diodes, but transistors look different. Usually they have three legs and Sometimes they are also SMD, but also with three legs. But the IRF7317 has more pins. Now, why is that? It is because it has two transistors, one P channel and one N channel. And they are both logic level. They work with 3.3 volt because they already switch at roughly two volt gate voltage. And here I have PCBs, small ones, for different SMD parts. And this one fits this case here. And I just, you break one off here. Now this is just one. And I solder my transistors on one of those PCBs and now I can use it on my breadboard, for example. So I do not need more than one transistor. I just connect either the NPN or the PNP. And if I need both, then I have both in the same case. Here is the data sheet of this IRF7317. It can be used up till 20 volt and the RDS on is neglectable for our projects. One thing is very important, and this is the gate voltage to switch it on. This is the diagram. The voltages are here from 1.5 to 3 volts. And here is the drain current, 10 ampere, 100 ampere anyway is too much. It already supports 10 ampere at less than two volt gate voltage. And this is really very, very low for a field effect transistor. Usually we use 3.3 volt processors. So if it switches below two volt, it is completely on at 3.3 volt. A perfect fit 
for our project. Here is the listing. 10 pieces cost $1.38 plus $1.26 shipping. So a little bit more than 20 cents per two transistors in one case. The next one came from Enotion. I made once a video about it. I leave a link in the description. And they asked me if I want to test their newest sensor. And I was not sure. But when I saw the advertisement, the multi-sensor is the Swiss knife for smart buildings. I had to have it. I mean, this is clear, a Swiss knife. Now, why is this a Swiss knife? It has several sensors integrated, a magnet contact, a reed switch, humidity, illumination, acceleration, and temperature. So one, two, three, four, five different sensors. Plus, it does not need charging. It has a solar panel here, quite a large one. Of course, I tried the sensor out with my Enotion setup on my Raspberry Pi and Node Red, and it worked. I was able to pair it and I was able to read it. Unfortunately, is it is not yet supported by the Node Red contribution node. So if you want to use it, you have to decode it yourself. I wrote to the maintainer of this Enotion contribution node and asked him if he plans to support this new Swiss knife sensor, uh, but unfortunately I did not get an answer yet. We know that these sensors are not cheap. It costs roughly $150 here in Switzerland. Maybe it's a little bit cheaper in your country, but this one can, comes already with a small case around it. When I got this package, I was a little bit confused, hacked, but then I saw it is a joke. So obviously also the guys at the customs had no worries about it. And when I opened it, I saw that this just uh, was really a joke. And Jasper sent me this small board here with this big capacitor and a solar panel. If you saw my video about energy harvesting, you know Jasper, because already then he sent me one of his modules. And now he wrote me and said, I discovered something very special, a very special capacitor. And this is a capacitor which is a mixture between a supercapacitor and a lithium battery. Let's have a look at this technology. This is Jasper, and this is his board on Tindy, a solar harvesting into lithium ion capacitor, costs $25, but I have to tell you, I will not buy this one because its specifications are not good enough for the moment. It supports only a low current, and this is not useful for LoRa nodes, for example, because it's not strong enough. But he wrote me that he works on a second device with a independent voltage regulator, boost converter, and then it will support more power. So thank you, Jasper, that you made us aware of this new capacitor technology. Here we have a comparison between LiPo, EDLC, these are the normal supercapacitors, and this new LIC technology. All are rechargeable. The battery life is 200 to maybe five, 600 times chargeable for the LiPo batteries and 20,000 for the LIC. The supercapacitor can be charged much more, but I assume that in energy harvesting stuff, this 20,000 will be enough because usually we charge it once a day. What is interesting is the energy density as we saw, the energy density of supercapacitors is low compared to the LiPo or LiYon technology, but the LIC is somehow in between. What is also a very important advantage of this LIC technology is that the chemicals in it are less dangerous, so they can be shipped 
they have this ROHS or REACH label. This is, seems to be no problem for these supercapacitors, these two, but it seems to be a problem for the batteries. And also the high flammability is no problem. What is also interesting for our application is that the supercapacitors go only to 2.7 volts, at least the ones we have. And this one goes to 3.8 volts, so a much better fit for our projects because our devices usually run down to about 3 volts. Another question is the pricing and Jasper told me that they built now a new uh, manufacturing plant in China and this is why the prices came down considerably and are now more or less comparable with supercapacitors. So for energy harvesting this technology seems to be a real good fit if we do not need batteries. The last one is this solar motion sensor light. Now this can be an interesting device if you want to have some light in the night. It has a solar panel, it has a PIR and it has quite bright LEDs here. But I purchased it for something different. I already took the screw out here and here you see what's inside. It has a connection to the solar panel. The PIR sensor is on this PCB and it has already a battery. And you see it has quite some space in it for some electronics. And my idea now is to use this housing for projects, for my outdoor projects where I need solar power and a battery. Maybe I can use this PCB, maybe not. Then I have to replace it with a normal battery charger, but I have a small battery here. I have a solar panel and I have a housing. It seems that they made it somehow watertight. I do not know, I have to test next summer. But if we look at the listing, I have this one here in one piece. You can have it also in two pieces, but I thought I have more space in the one piece version. And if we look at the listing, the, the single piece costs $7 plus $5 shipping. So it's about $12 for a battery, for a case, for a solar cell, and maybe even the LEDs if you, if you want to use them. Uh, this, is, this price is okay and it's already made. I do not have to 3D print something. So I thought this is a, a nice fit for a outdoor project. This was all I had to show. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.